Oh, it's a really cool interview actually with Future, which I thought was really cool. Which has has some um, tie in with um, a Dax J interview that I read. So Future's featured here in Double XL magazine, where he learns to uh, where he learns to drive a yacht, which is you know very lavish. I'm not sure how they got the budget to do this, but fair enough to Double XL. But it's a really cool interview. Loads of really interesting pieces. But one of the things I thought was really cool. So I'm gonna put up here. Let me see if I can see the bit that what bit that I mentioned. Da, 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 da. Yeah, this is a bit. So we get here. It's a bit about upper coming rappers. I think it's about juice in it, right? Juice. Let's see if I can find it here. Da, da, da. It says I didn't feel bad. Words up here. Yeah. So this is a bit that I thought was really interesting, right? So this interviewer sits down with Future. Essentially, he talks to him about Juice World and the passing of Juice World and some other rappers, and just saying how hard it's coming again. I thought Future's response was um, very insightful. It means that maybe he's growing as a person, but I don't know. Maybe because it's a written interview, he feels a bit more comfortable. But he was very, he was a lot more open than he has been in other interviews I've read or heard or watched of his. So here's the interview for Double XL. The question is as follows. With the loss of Juice, Nipsey and Excess Tentacion, Mac Miller and Pop Smoke and others, it feels like we have lost more rappers than ever, from murder to drug overdose to illness. Do you feel like being a rapper is a crazy thing right now, or like you've lost a lot of peers? He says, nah, because it's regular people that go to jail, I mean regular people that live their life, they go to work, and if somebody walk in their job and just shoot them, they never thought they died from a gunshot. It's just randomly they happen to die from a gunshot. Rest in peace to anybody that ever caused... Uh, or ever went through that tragedy or ever went through that problem my heart goes out to them but at the same time it's like everyone dies for different reasons it's just so happened to be a rapper or something that they just died from this way and they shed a light on it and it's just like oh did rappers doing this is that epidemic of rappers overdosing and getting murdered it's the streets man it's the new streets it's the new wave it's the new stream which i definitely agree with and then this bit was very enlightening it says it's like a lot of rappers uh it's a lot, a lot more rappers than back 10 years ago so now a lot of things more are going to occur so it's true so there's more rappers so I think more will happen it's a lot of young yeah, rappers that are growing up super fast that's getting money super quick don't have classes on success they don't have guidelines on what they need to do when you get success or what to do when you get money how much sleep you're supposed to get how much water you're supposed to drink how many drugs you don't supposed to take it's like not a class there's no guideline on that you really have to maneuver on your own and become your own person or just got to be like your own boss. So everything that happens, it comes from you. You got to know when to give, when to give and you got to know when to let up sometimes and detox. You got to know when enough is enough because you control your own destiny and you don't want to self-destruct. Fucking really, really succinct, succinct um, response from Future. You didn't really expect that, and that's really true. I think there was um there was a bit of hysteria happening, especially you know we've lost too many rappers, that's for sure. But you know, some of them, you know, some of the circumstances individually were really tragic if you look at the stories and stuff. But the drug overdose sort of thing to pin the blame on him specifically, I thought was a little bit unfair. I think you know for. You know, since the inception of music, people have been exploring, especially on the creative side of things. Artists have been exploring their creativity via uh, mind altering mind altering substances since the beginning of time, right? And it's still going to continue. It's part of the artistic journey for some people. Some people continue on it, you know, or some people kind of uh, divert off it and decide to get sober and just tap into their creativity in other ways. But people have been exploring that, you know, since the beginning of time. And uh, there are going to be some children, there are going to be some kids, there are going to be some individuals out there who are going to be more susceptible to influence, right? They're going to give into it, they're going to try these things and dabble into it, which isn't a bad thing either because part of the reason why brands align with rappers or artists is because they want the young and impressionable people out there who follow them to also be impressionable enough to purchase those things. So it works twofold, right? If, if he's promoting Mercedes, um, and, he, and then he talks about a liquor brand there's no difference he's going to influence somebody but you know obviously the, the degrees and severity in terms of drugs and maybe alcohol you know there's a big difference there in that regard but I don't think you can place a blame on him that way but I think a lot of the blame needs to be laid squarely le- less at the peers in the, in the insect industry and more so at the actual uh, people that work within it the comp, the record labels, the production companies, the agents, the management teams, they are the ones that should put most of the blame. And of course, the family, the person brought up in, that's obviously um, by the by. But the record label needs to get more blame. 
record label needs to be have more scrutinized more in this regard because they signed these kids at 16 17 sometimes younger but basically if you look at someone like little pump who got that's something people don't talk about too often he's lucky to go out of the deal but he got signed a record label deal you know when he was underage he did not know better the label the record label deal was you know completely screwed him over and luckily he was able to get out because he was a minor which is even you know shows how inept that record label is that they were able to sign a minor not know he was a minor think they could get away with it and then they didn't it's like you know wasted a whole lot of time and money in that one but i think more blame is he put record label record label needs to have some kind of i'm not sure if it's a wellness center i'm not sure if it's a health and safety officer whoever it is there needs to be somebody there who's able to guide the artists through all the many pitfalls that they're going to encounter whilst they're kind of coming up in the scene and it always feels as if it happens in the beginning it always feels as if at the start of their career is when things get crazy especially after the first single pops it feels like when you get when you get the first single and you suddenly start appearing on ellen and you start going on jimmy fallon and you start doing npr or not npr is probably a little bit later down the line but you start to do more radio tv interview more radio um, interviews more tv interviews you just have to get yourself out there a bit you maybe have a spotify billboard out there that's when the um, influences start to or the negative influences start to come into your life you start to get all these hangers on coming in you start to build up a bevy of new friends you maybe fall out of a few people that you were hanging out with in the beginning it starts to get a bit murky especially in the beginning so i think that's the crucial place thing to be and a lot of them don't do that especially some of the management companies right they're eager to take their 10 their 5 10 15 percent off the person but they're not really eager to kind of help them out and make sure that they're okay mentally and physically and also there needs to be an honest conversation about what it actually takes to be you know obviously not everyone could be drake that's for sure not everyone can because he was kind of primed for stardom because he was a you know a childhood star a child a child actor by the way but before he actually made it as a rapper right he was well known in canada he was in the grass you know he had he he'd, he'd already been in the machine right he kind of had some kind of experience so he built up some sort of calluses to the industry so he was fine but if you're just a regular schmegular kid and you've suddenly been thrust into a limelight and then you have, you know, $100,000 in the back pocket from a cash advance and you've got all these brands sending you free items and you're invited to all these crazy parties and all these girls in your DMs and it, it, it can, can get a bit overwhelming. And I can understand if you, you know, seek comfort in drugs and alcohol to kind of numb you a little bit and make you slow down and kind of live in a moment because things are just coming at you 100 miles per hour. But it needs to be more people around them that can help them with it and to kind of put the blame on future is really really um irresponsible and short-sighted really because he's just an art he's just one guy those artists for the most part have a whole team around them that can advise them against doing those things but they don't of course the street stuff you know you can't really avoid that i think when you've got the mark on you from the streets you have it right you just kind of wait for your day to come but the things that can be avoided like the drugs overdose and stuff that's mostly due to the team that they have around them and it got me thinking about the professionalism that's needed to be a top artist of course like i mentioned i mean, it could be drake but i think there is a lack of understanding of what it actually takes to be a star what it actually takes to be a working professional in the entertainment industry that's why for a long time i had a bit of a problem with you know arlie lennox always complaining on social about not you know about this part about this award show not giving her a prize about not getting this feature in this magazine it just felt a little bit too entitled like you, you just assume because you put out a good album and because you've been featured on pitchfork that suddenly everyone's meant to like bow down and kiss your feet that's not how it works right you're meant to continually keep working at your craft keep honing it getting better at moving at shaking hands kissing babies and just being an artist and sometimes being an artist requires you to do things you don't want to do right going to a radio station in the middle of nowhere that's got you know 22 listeners because you just checked down your phone quickly just so you can um keep that relationship sweet with the label for somebody else and if it's not even for you sometimes you're doing that for you're doing that for another person coming after you or just to connect with that kind of an industry or connect with that audience these are things that you have to do just because you're an artist you might have to you know sleep in you might have to wake up a little bit earlier like future said you might have to drink more water you might have to go to sound check and not just turn up for your performance loads of little things that will then affect the way you live your life right you can't necessarily go to the club and turn up you can't go to a strip club you can't hang out with your friends long but those things i don't think are mentioned too often maybe because for the most part a lot of people can get away with just putting out something on soundcloud getting a bit of heat from that performing at some club shows getting paid the odd you know 1500 3500 pounds five grand and it's suddenly you're fine and you don't need to kind of like try that hard but i think if you're trying to make the next jump 
to real stardom you need to know that it is a job it's not it's not all fun and games it's not all kind of you know it's not just um it's not the scene that you would have fought from rolling loud every single day there is work involved and i think this interview here from dax j really spoke upon it people can get up on here it's an old interview from dax j from resident advisor but i think it really is illuminating in terms of how to treat it like a job so i can find it um the, 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 see what it says, says something like da, 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 da. Da, da, da. let's back up here, let's back up there here. Says the goes down chain music the weekend software is ready to find the oh this is a good we can't use it. Yeah he has uh mm. yeah here you go so the question to this is from Dax J kind of touches upon what Puget said. It says here, so how do you deal with playing so much these days, right? From Resident Advisor, Dax J is one of the, you know, um, leading lights in the technical scene. Um, somebody that a lot of people have a lot of time for. I recommend you check out some of his productions. He's a really good dude. But the question here says, how do you deal with the playing so much these days? He answers, I don't drink at gigs anymore. The only time I part is in Berlin. When I'm on the plane, I like to work or read, which I can't do if I'm hungover. It's turned into the opposite of what I'd imagined DJ life to be like. While I was growing up, I thought I'd be like a rock star lifestyle, but it's complete opposite of what I envisioned. <laughs> I think I'm actually healthier than I would have been if I wasn't DJing. If I wasn't DJing, I'd be meeting up with friends and drinking, and which would lead to all sorts of stuff. So, which is interesting, right? Because I think when you're starting out, you would imagine, especially looking at these guys with their hands out wide, looking at a crowd, taking their shirt off, you know, doing all that stupid shit. You'd think, oh, okay, this person's getting on it 24-7. They're getting all these free drinks. They're sponsored by Bacardi. Got a Hennessy collab. You know, they're Ciroc boys. All this sort of shit. That's what you actually think. But if you look at some of their schedules, especially you look at someone like a Solomon, right? You see how much that guy's flying around the world. You see how many gigs he's playing, actually. I'm actually going to load up on here and see if I can get it. Uh, Solomon. All right. Mm, where's an advisor? You see how many gigs that Solomon's playing and stuff. It's just impossible for you to be drunk and hungover or even high all the time doing work in that kind of way that he works. <coughs> but again, it's, it's up to you what you want to do. I think for, the most, for most people, I think it's, it's the decision that they have to make as to kind of what kind of level they want to be at do you want to be at you know if you just want to be a kind of a local legend you probably can't get away with just playing you know three gigs a week um getting smashed doing it again because you've got some days to recover but i think when you're flying different time zones different countries um the different timings as well you might play a festival during the day then you're doing another club gig then you're playing in after hours you might not even sleep literally for 24 hours so you look at someone like a solomon of course these dates are uh, mostly cancelled due to the pandemic at the moment but just look at some of the dates and where he's at right he's at obviously he's um, residency at Ibiza then from there a week after he's going to Amsterdam then back again to Ibiza then over to Turin then back again to Ibiza then over to Amsterdam then back again to Ibiza then to Hungary then back again to Ibiza it's literally impossible to do that like you know drunk and high it just won't work the way that you imagine it to be and I think rappers are the same they need to kind of understand that you know as beneficial as it is to kind of you know turn up and have a good time in a club you kind of want to maintain some molecule of what do you say a profession of a professionalism and just maintain your help too your health as well as the most thing because for a lot of these guys they tend to get better the older they get the more sets and reps they get in the more experience they have the more they're able to develop their sound they will obviously grow into a different artist and they started out to but some of them they don't even have the chance because they just get so wrapped up they get so ingratiated in the rock star lifestyle that they forget that the actual because that's the thing when you read some of these books which probably they don't read but they should some of these all biography books from heavy metal bands especially the ones that were you know popular in the 70s or no probably it's popular in the 70s and 80s yeah they're kind of like hair metal bands and you read what they were getting up to especially like the motley crew and shit like yeah, fair enough, they were, you know, they were probably garbage human beings at some point and they were probably doing too many drugs and drinking way too much. But the one thing you can't deny, especially look at their discography, they were putting out a lot of good music. Like it was solid back to back albums, great live shows, you know, entertaining a crowd, um, 
of course you had the production of those shows was absolutely incredible it wasn't just some guy on a you know on a pair of uh, midi dj controllers you know spinning behind them it was actual show where they flew in you know players drum players guitar players instrumentalists and stuff um and that was all kind of to elevate the show and give the, the fans a bit of an experience but the rappers don't do the same thing at all and then they expect those kind of re rewards it's really kind of short-sighted really but again i really recommend you check it out um really cool interview with um future featured in double xl magazine let me try to get up here again for you guys to see on the screen it is titled interview with future read exclusive double xl interview about life is good oh yeah he announced his always new album is called life is good so you should be seeing that happening very very soon the club album with drake is probably going to be put on the back burner so it looks like that track that lead that was a lead single for his album i'm assuming it's going to rack up some numbers on that one and then probably drop the album later uh, later down the line so let's definitely keep an eye out for him with the album i really reckon i'm really excited to see what that ends up sounding